Today, we are, today happens to be Nigeria's Independence Day, and it's, well, we're proud of our heritage as Nigerians, you know, but um, we have work to do. Amen. Yes. Let's bow our head in prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together today to celebrate your faithfulness. Because it's if, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, it says when men rose up against us, we would have been swallowed up, we would have become non-existent. As a nation, we would have become non-existent. But you are faithful, you are our God. And so we know there is hope. Lamentation chapter 3 says because of the faithfulness of God that the steadfast of the Lord never sees, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. It's because of your mercies that we have not been consumed. So we come here today to offer thanks and praise. And we ask, Lord, that you accept it. We ask, Lord, that we experience open heavens, not just for Nigeria, but for our individual lives, for our families, for our, for our children, for our businesses, for everything that, we, that, that, is, that belongs to us. We're asking that we'll experience a fresh breath of God from heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be accepted in thy sight today. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. I'd like to say thank you to our choir leaders and thank you for leading us to worship God. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of Israel. So I just want to encourage us to get in the spirit of praise and worship all the time. The Bible says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Um, I want to thank uh, Pastor Nira and Pastor Tony for this opportunity to share on this um, great uh, day that we're marking Nigeria's independence. I'll start by the theme for this service is the glory of the Nigerian nation. Uh, how many minutes do I have, sir? 30? Praise God. Hallelujah. 30 minutes. Amen. The glory of Nigerian nation. A, a few brief historical facts before we read the Bible. Nigeria became um, a country in 1914, right? A little bit of history. Um, I, most of us, I believe, are Nigerians uh, by birth. Amen. And for our invited guests and for people who, who are joining us today who are not Nigerians, um, we hope by the end of this service, you will love Nigeria, amen, and keep Nigeria in your prayers and uh, be a part of what God is doing in Nigeria, amen. So Nigeria became a country, um, that the name was adopted in 1914. Um, Nigeria became independent in 1960, became a republic in 1963. Nigeria is the most populous black nation on earth, about 200 million people right now. Uh, is the largest oil producer in Africa. It's very rich in minerals. Um, Nigeria survived a civil war, amen, uh, a, a, a brutal civil war. We're happy that, um, that God saved Nigeria, amen. And Nigeria has immense human resources, and you are part of that human resources, amen. Now, we're going to devote a little bit of our time to talk about those of us in the diaspora, amen. What is your role in today's Nigeria? You know, many of us, once we're settled abroad, we kind of forget that um, there's still somewhere called Nigeria. Amen. Sorry for... <laughs> I have to use glasses because age is catching up on some of us, on our vision. Amen. But what I'm trying to say is this. We have a lot of precedent from the Word of God to know that there is... There's not just hope for Nigeria, but Nigeria will rise again. Amen. You are part of Nigeria's glory. Amen. Things may seem to have gone down, and things have gone down a lot. From the time when some of us went to school to the time to now. I mean, 60 years, 63 years of independence. And when we were growing up as kids, the Nigerian naira was stronger than the dollar. We knew that very well. I mean, we, it's... Um, I mean, somebody posted something on Facebook where the BTA then was um, 80 something covered to a dollar. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of the reverse today, but there's nothing God cannot do. Amen. So let's open our text, Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. 
God has a plan. God has a plan. And the scripture that um, our brother led us to read this morning, that God makes nations great, is absolutely true. Isaiah 66 from verse 7. It says, before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I, who cause delivery, shut up the womb, says your God? Verse 10. Rejoice with Jerusalem. Rejoice with Nigeria. Amen. And be glad with her, all you who love her. Amen. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn for her. Many of us have mourned for Nigeria. Some people have given up hope. It's like, I'm, everybody just wants to get out. Verse 11. That you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation of her bosom, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Verse 12. For thus says the Lord, thus says Jehovah, thus says the Lord that made heaven and earth, behold, I will extend peace to her, to Nigeria, like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles, like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed on her side, then you shall feed, on her side shall you be carried, and shall be dandled on her knees. Verse 13. And as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall be comforted in Nigeria. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of nations. What he did for the nation of Israel in time past, in present day, he can do for any nation. Amen. And diaspora Nigerians are much like diaspora Jews. Praise God. I can make that comparison because it's absolutely true. Everywhere we go, we, 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 we succeed. We're prosperous. Praise God. And that's part of, that gives me a lot of hope that God has a plan for Nigeria. Nigeria was not a mistake and is not a mistake. I know there are many voices in Nigeria. There are probably more than 200 uh, nation groups in Nigeria, different languages. I mean, main languages, uh, Hausa, Fulani, Yoruba, Igbo, but different, diff when we're growing up, so many, whether it's Efik, Ibiobio, whether it's uh, Urobo, Ishekiri, so many, you know, so many groups. But God put all those entities together in one nation. He has a plan. It's not a mistake, praise God. So the present situation of Nigeria is a little bit concerning. You know, and like the psalmist said in Psalm 137, said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and ye we wept when we remembered Nigeria. Amen. But the story doesn't end there, and it will not end there in Jesus' name. We're still going to praise God for Nigeria. A lot of us here went, I did, on, I did school in Nigeria, and I always tell people that a nation that could afford to train me for seven years, medical school, and I did not pay a t zero tuition. Many of us can, at can attest to it. Many of us went to Unilag, University of Ibadan, Unamde Azikwe University, I mean, Unsuka University of Nigeria. Those were great Nigerian institutions. You know, institutions with many of us had foreign lecturers, a lot of foreigners in Nigeria. In fact, I had a neighbor in, my, in Bakersfield that said, oh, my, her parents were in, were in Nigeria, they were in Benin or something. I'm like, really? Yeah. People who identify as Nigerians, who were born in Nigeria, maybe Lebanese, Indians, and they were there when the nation was flourishing. God will restore things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 1. This is where we come in. There were so many diaspora Jews, and God used them to restore Israel. Amen. Till this day, amen. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, he came to pass in the month of Chislev in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem, concerning Nigeria. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down. The walls of Nigeria, have break, they've, they've broken down. And its gates are burned with fire. Amen. Somebody remarked that it's, Lagos Airport is the only one you get to where you can't do car rental and, and, and be off. You know, it's, but 
God will bring order to our country. Amen. Whether it's government corruption or civil corruption, we have to talk about it because the truth sets free. Amen. Um, in Bakersfield, we do the Nigeria Praises and Praise program. I thank God I can see my sister from Bakersfield. We've been doing it for eight years, and we bring people together, Nigerians, lovers of Nigeria. We praise God. We prophesy over the nation. Praise the Lord. We have to be honest to ourselves. Lots of corruption. It's got to stop. Amen. And I tell people, look, if you have somebody in government, who, tell them no corruption. That's the key. Public funds must be used for public development. Amen. Should they end up in my private account? Praise God. I mean, when we were growing up, there were many, many industries in Nigeria, right? Whether it was Leland, Leland in Ibadan, whatever, battery manufacturers, Volkswagen, Pojo in Kaduna, brand new cars been exported out. Right now, there is zero, almost near zero export. And that's why the Naira has crashed. You can, crude oil alone cannot survive, cannot sustain Nigeria. Amen. Nigeria is allocated 2 million barrels by OPEC. They hardly produce a million today. Much of it is stolen, stolen crude. And the people in government know, right? It's stolen, everything is stolen. You have crude, but you can't refine it. Praise God, you sold your refineries to private, uh, I don't care, who, I'm sorry, this, we're not really here to talk politics. There's a lot of mal governance, but we pray for good governance going forward, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Lots of jobs gone, a lot of decadence. And this is where the church comes in, and the church must remain a light. You know, and whether it's pastors preaching from the pulpit, let's look at the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 6. And not many, many, not many of us want to offend the people in power, but we have to tell them the truth like the prophets of old. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23b. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23. It says, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If your eye is bad. Because the eye is the light of the body. That's what Jesus said. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Praise God. This is where the church comes in. The church must remain a light. All over the world, whether it's in America, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Nigeria, the church must remain a light. He says you are the light of the world. So all the corruption in the land must, the church needs to be shielded. The church needs to shield itself by preaching righteousness to everybody. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There is a right way to do things. There is always a wrong way to do things. Praise God. There are also Christians everywhere getting contracts from the government, doing 10% kickback. That was the norm when we were growing up, right? 10%. You know, mobilization fee, and then nothing is done. And the governments keep putting that project in Anna budget, whether it's the Lagos, the Baden Express, every year it's in the budget. And like, what happened to the money that was allocated last year? Gone. Distributed upfront. <laughs> it's got to stop. Amen. So we have to be a light. We have to preach truth to power. Amen. I mean, our peers now are governors and senators. Let's talk to them. Do the right thing. If you want God to, to be honored, God is not going to come down. We are going to do it. Amen. Just like the diaspora Jews, God didn't come down. God used them. Praise Jesus. Everybody is envious of the nation of Israel today. They're people of covenant. We also are a people of covenant. Praise Jesus. Because God has not asked us to serve him in vain. God has not asked any group of people to worship him in vain. And he will show up for us all the time. Amen. So now let's look at... Um, what, what is our role in the restoration of Nigeria's glory? What is your role as a person? Let's keep reading Nehemiah. Let's go back to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. Which one of us has a role? And let's not say we're small. We're all important. Everybody has a role. It may be small, but if every, the Bible says every, the, body of, the body of Christ is fitly joined together by that which every part contributes. Every part. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 4. He says, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down. Like Sam, the psalmist said in Psalm 137, by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down and we wept when we remembered Zion. Amen. He says, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. 
for I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. There is a God in heaven. He sees all the troubles and challenges people are going through in that country and he's going to do something about it. Amen. Verse 5. Verse five. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you will keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your ears open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, for the children of Nigeria, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, the children of Nigeria, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you. Amen. Now we see in Yoruba, we say that and we interpret that, you know, the, the rod is spanking itself. It says it's spanking the dog. You know, every act of public or private corruption, we're really stealing from ourselves. Praise Jesus. We're stealing from ourselves. Now we're talking about the dollar being less than the naira on, yeah, the, the naira being worth more than the dollars when we were growing up. Now a dollar is a thousand naira. Before our eyes, the economy is crumbled. Praise Jesus. The giant of Africa. And then they will rebase the economy just to make it the biggest economy. In Africa. It's all, all that is gimmicks. Praise Jesus. The common man on the street is not happy. Amen. Their life is hard. And um, there's, sorry, there's another proverb that says, Ujwaro ni kosara It's the morning rain. It will touch every one of them. Whether it's the man in government who is hoarding money. Before we get to South Africa, I mean, there was a time uh, one of the legislators had bonds. Before he got to South Africa, he died. They need to, you got to fix the system. Praise Jesus. I, I, we need to speak truth to those in power. Stop stealing. If something is allocated for road development, use it for that purpose. If something is allocated for schools, use it for that purpose. Praise Jesus. God will help us. So here we have um, Nehemiah praying. Verse 8 says, Remember I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. And that is what has happened to us, people of God. We are scattered among the nations. But it's for a purpose. Because God does not make mistakes. Amen. I'm not here by mistake. Praise Jesus. I mean, many of us now are counting 20, 30, 40 years in the United States. It's not a mistake. It's God's purpose. But God will use it to fulfill his purpose, both for the United States and for Africa. Amen. Africa must be free. Africa, must, Africa is the last frontier that needs to, to rise up. Amen. China rose up. India rose up. Africa is the last frontier, and it's going to rise up. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So verse, um, verse 9 says, But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest part of, he of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your power, by your great power, and by your strong hand. Oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man for I was the king's cupbearer. Now it's important to know how God used all those young diaspora Jews, whether it was Nehemiah, whether it was Daniel, to, whether it was Esther, praise God. Esther, God used Esther to, 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 to put an end to what would have been the first extermination of Jews on earth. Praise Jesus. You don't know where you're going to be. Amen. And, and we have examples of Nigerians in diaspora, like Nehemiah. They're the king's cupbearer. They have the ear of a president. Whether it's here, whether you never know. Yes, there are. Amen. And God will raise them up. God will raise up Nehemiahs from this congregation who will be able to say, you know what? I'm going to do something for that place. Praise God. So, so Nehemiah was a diaspora Jew, just like many of us today. He was highly placed in the government. He was, he was, he was the king's wine, wine steward. That is a trusted position because you can poison the king, right? Before the king will make you his cupbearer, it means you must be a trusted person. And that was how God dealt with diaspora Jews. Everywhere they went, his grace was upon them. Just like his grace is upon us as Nigerians. So let's, um, 
So the pathway forward for the restoration of Nigeria's glory starts with you as an individual Nigerian, whether you're at home or you're in the diaspora. Your personal consecration is of utmost importance. Praise God. Your personal consecration is of utmost importance because the prayers of a wicked man are an abomination to God. Your, your consecration is of utmost importance. Then comes intercession. Hallelujah. We all got to go on our knees and keep praying. And we've got to serve the Lord with all our heart. Some of us get out of, get out of, some of us are out here and we don't, we hardly even make time for, for, ch for church fellowship, for fellowship. We're not, we've, we've, it's like we left the Bible in Nigeria when we left Nigeria. It's like, don't give me any one of that, whatever. Praise God. But there's no life outside of God. Amen. There's no life outside of God. Whatever your profession, whatever your calling, whatever, however prosperous, however big you become, there is no life outside of God. Solomon realized that. I mean, no man was blessed as Solomon was. And then in the, when, when he backslid from God, he said, vanity of vanities, all. He said, everything that my eye desired, I got. That is amazing. Elon Musk is nothing compared to who Solomon was. But God made Solomon everything he was. So your personal consecration is of utmost importance and you must serve God with your whole heart. Let's look at um, John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 26. He says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him will my father honor. Now, serving Christ is important. Whatever you're doing for the Lord is important. It doesn't matter. You see, it's not about what in my native tongue I call Ujuaye. Ujuaye is like a man pleaser. You are doing it to make pastor happy. No, 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 no. Your relationship with God has gone beyond that. Your primary purpose in life is to honor God. Amen. God first. Amen. You must honor God. You must serve God with your whole heart. You want God to exalt you? He, serve Him with your whole heart. Be faithful in a little and you'll be faithful in much. If, if you are faithful in a little, God will commit more to you, right? We all remember the parable of talents, right? I'm just here to challenge somebody. You know, there is nothing God can... God took you from the streets of whether it's a Ibadan or Abakaliki, wherever God took, and brought you here for a purpose. You must fulfill that purpose. Amen. The Bible says of John the Baptist that, that, that as he fulfilled his ministry, you must fulfill the purpose and your destiny. Part of your destiny is that you're a diaspora Nigerian. You're not here to warm benches. Amen. And you're not here to, 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 to live, to do anything fraudulent either. Praise God. You are here to be clean, to be straight, just like the diaspora Jews. You are here to be the best in your career, in your profession. For Jesus. For Jesus. Not, not if, if you, you see, Matthew chapter 6, that we like to quote a lot. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things are added unto you. The prior verse says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. But your heavenly father knows that you have need of them. God knows you need stuff. But we must not sacrifice our souls because of stuff. That was what Solomon realized. That everything my eye desired, I got. If I wanted to go to space, if Solomon wanted to go to space in his time, he probably would have gone to space and come back. But at the end of the day, without God, everything was empty. Zero. So it starts with our personal consecration. And 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 is a scripture we all, I believe all of us know now, we... It's a part of the core scriptures in our, in our intercessors um, forum. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Praise the Lord. So personal consecration is important. Um, and then intercession. Let's look at um, Isaiah chapter 62. We'll soon round up. Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62. 
I'll start from verse 1. It says, for Zion's sake, for Nigeria's sake, I will not hold my peace. Amen. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamb that burns. The Gentiles shall see our righteousness. In, amen. In Nigeria. And all kings, our glory, you shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken. Nigeria shall no longer be termed forsaken. Nor shall your land anymore be termed desolate. Amen. But you shall be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you. The Lord delights in Nigeria. He said, and your land shall be married. Nigeria shall be married. Married to Jesus. Amen. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Amen. You are the sons of Nigeria that will marry her again and make sure that her glory shines again. Amen. And verse 6 says, I have set watchmen on your walls. O Jerusalem, O Nigeria, they shall never hold their peace. Day or night, you will make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. And give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem and Nigeria a praise in the earth. He has a plan. He has a purpose. When we are growing up, uh, there used to be a man of God, Pa Elton, who gave a prophecy about Nigeria. You know that just like you have a gun and you have a trigger, that Nigeria is the trigger point. And you know, out of Nigeria, is going to, it's like an explosion. And we've had an explosion of Nigerians outside. There is a purpose. But after that is done, God will take, do something about that country. Amen. He's not done. God is not done with Nigeria. Let's look at Daniel. Let's look at Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29 is a scripture we love to read. I will soon round up and we'll pray. Jeremiah 29. Thank God for the prophets. Thank God for the prophets. They guided the nation of Israel through their time of captivity. You know? And God, and you and I, God is raising us up to be a guide, a light to that nation. And we're not going to fail in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 1. It says, Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This happened from Jeconiah the king, the queen. This happened after Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen, the smith, and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa the son of Shaphan and Gemariah the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah king of Judah sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the God of Nigeria, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 5 says, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens, eat their fruit. Take wives, begat sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. Amen. Can you see God's purpose? Those of us who are outside are here for a purpose. Build houses. Dwell in them. Plant gardens. Eat their fruit. Participate in the economy of the land where God has brought you to. You are not here by mistake. You are not here by accident. Praise Jesus. Verse 7. He says, And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it. For in his peace we have peace. How many of you pray for this country? This United States of America. You got to pray for this nation. Amen. Because the temperature is getting hot. Hallelujah. But God is on the throne. God has always raised nations that have been guides to other nations. Whether it was, whether it was the Persian kingdom that Esther was in, whether it's Nebuchadnezzar and the son that ruled after him, whether it was Darius, all those kings, they were the superpowers of their time. Whether it was Egypt, before Nebuchadnezzar was Egypt and Assyria that God sent Jonah to. Those were the superpowers of their time. But God raised up Israel in the midst of all those countries. And God, look at what God did in the book of Daniel. God even made Nebuchadnezzar to, to know him as the God of Israel. And he commanded everybody in his kingdom to worship the God of Israel. 
There's nothing God cannot do. Let's stop underestimating the power of God. He made heaven and earth. Praise God. This is where I'm going. Um, verse 10. Verse 10 of Jeremiah chapter 29. It says, For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you and cause you to return to this place. How do I know there is hope for Nigeria? Because of you and me. Because of precedent, historical precedent. God told the children of Israel, he said, after 70 years, the times and the seasons are in his hands. But my job and your job is to keep praying, keep believing, and keep doing what is right. Amen. And, and that's what Jesus told the told his disciples. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. I'll soon round up. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. And this is a question we all have. You know, I mean, many of us didn't think the elections would go the way it went in Nigeria, right? It's, it's a pity we can't even vote, right? Our country is not advanced enough for us to be voting outside Nigeria. You know, praise God. It's, it's okay. It doesn't stop God from doing what he wants to do. Amen. Verse 6, Acts chapter 1 says, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Lord, will you at this time make Nigeria great again? That's the question we're asking. I'm invested in the future of Nigeria because of my posterity, because of my children's children, so they know where they're from. We all know the ills of colonization, the ills of slavery, what it has done. And that is why I'm saying that continent will rise again. Every power seems to, to focus on Africa, whether it's Russia and China and, 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 and the European colonizers. And all the resources have been have been exported for, for hundreds of years and it's not exhausted. <laughs> Is God not awesome? We're just asking for a fresh beginning. They can keep everything that they've taken, whether it's all the human resources, all the slaves that were shipped to the Caribbean and the Americas and Europe. You probably have cousins you don't even know. <laughs> Ten cousins. Praise God. People are using 23, 23 to find their genealogy. I mean, I... God is awesome. You know, at least we're here, praise God. And God has a plan. So look at what the Jews were asking because at this time in Israel, they were, they were under the Romans. The Romans were the superpower of that time. And they were occupying Israel. They, they, literally, they literally controlled the life of the Jews. And even the disciples were concerned. And you should be concerned. Verse 6. It says, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, now that you have died and you have risen from the dead, now that you have proved to us that you are the son of God, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And look at the answer of Jesus. He says, and he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the power has put in his own authority. Amen. Can I tell you when Nigeria will turn around and become a great nation like it used to be in the past? No, I don't know. But it's going to happen. Amen. If Christ tarries. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. He says, verse 8, he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So as a Christian, as a Nigerian Christian, you have two ministries. One is primarily spiritual. The second, Nigeria is really a secondary ministry. Praise God. But we're concerned because, you see, you cannot watch that nation keep going down and fold your hands. It's just not possible. Then you're not a true Nigerian. Amen. And I'll refer back to my mother tongue. You know? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sorry that um, we love Proverbs. <laughs> Amen. No matter how sweet the journey is, you will always think of home. Amen. Praise God. So we have two ministries. Our first ministry is to honor God, to serve him. A secondary, now, even though Nigeria may be secondary, but because Nigeria is part of God's plan, which is why you are here today, which is where you left thousands of miles away and you are now here. You are settled. But you have two ministries, one for Jesus. Just like he told the disciples, 
Focus on that kingdom matter. Focus on God. Focus on my eternal purpose. And I will accomplish the rest. The rest is within God's power. Let's keep doing what God has called us to do. Let's spread the word. Let's save souls. Amen. Let's live right. Do what is right. And God will give us the resources for the restoration of the glory of Nigeria. Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Personal consecration starts with the salvation of your soul. I mean, it's, it's okay to assume and believe every person here is a child of God, but if you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never started the journey of faith, and there's nothing to be ashamed about it, because if you're going somewhere that is great, you're going to heaven. Praise God. You, you live in a life that Jesus is the, is, the, is the center and the periphery of everything. It starts with Jesus. Amen. The reason we're gathered today for Nigeria is because of Jesus. Amen. Because God has a plan for that nation. Amen. So I want you to think about it. If you've never given your life to Jesus, or if you've given your life to Christ and you've got in here and it's like, hey, man, I don't care what they say. I just want to enjoy my life. Really? I want you to think again. Amen. Because... The end of all things is certain, you know. I mean, it's appointed for a man to die after that comes judgment. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you know. So if you've never given your life to Jesus, I mean, you want to, to commit your life to God, you want to use this independence there as a marker. Say, on that day, I, I, I just recommitted things to God. I'll pray with you. Just raise your hand. If you've never given your life to Christ, raise your hands, all, all, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Let's just take a moment and just focus on Focus on God. Focus on the throne of heaven. Focus on the plan and purpose of God for our lives. Let's just bow our heads and just talk to the Lord. If there's any person here you want me to pray with you, lead you to, to reconnect with God, to start again with God. Amen. It's never late to start again. As long as you have your breath, you can always take that step of faith again and just start all over. If there's any person, you can raise your hand. I'm going to pray with you. You want to start again. You want to, you, you've been, you've gone off, you know, you've, taking some tight steps away from the faith and you know it, amen. Just, if there's any person, raise your hands, let me pray for you, hallelujah. Okay, right now I want us to just thank God for Nigeria, raise up your voice and thank God for Nigeria. God is the one that sets boundaries, hallelujah. God is the one that creates nations and sets boundaries. Nigeria is not a mistake. I want you to speak a word to that nation. And say, he says, uh, verse, uh, Psalm 102 verse 30, he says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, because the time to favor her has come. Speak that word. Let it come from your lips. And say, God, arise and have mercy on Zion, on Nigeria, because the time to favor her has come. Speak it forth. Say it forth. And let, 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 let the power of the Holy Ghost carry that word and bring it to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Hallelujah.